We're doing a whole lot of looking around on this Tuesday episode. We're taking a look into what has been going on in the land of Wolfpack Athletics. We're taking a look at this new offense with Brennan Armstrong back in the fold. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Wolfpack. Free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's right, $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. Happy Tuesday. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs, as we always do on Tuesdays. Despite the regular season for football coming to an end, we have a whole lot of nothing or a whole lot of something. Three topics each week to break down exactly how much to make of what's been going on. The first one here, NC State football had their three highest scoring totals with Brennan Armstrong at quarterback in these last three games that he started whole lot of nothing whole lot of something i say whole lot of something because we have identified our playmakers we're getting our playmakers involved and not only that we're looking at a situation where we're peaking at the right time we're peaking at the end of the season and don't get me wrong i would have loved to get these performances earlier i would have loved to see a situation where you know we were able to uh, beat Notre Dame and, and put up, you know, however many points on them or whatever the case may be. But really and truly, if you were to tell me, hey, Ken, you're going to go nine and three, which way would you want to end the regular season? I couldn't have picked a better way than this one. So I say a whole lot of something. Anaya is cooking. I love to see it. Brennan Armstrong's cooking. Love to see it. Offensive line is gelling and leaning on people, mashing faces in. Love to see it. Big boys winning up front. Love to see it. All in all, a whole lot of something in my book. It is definitely a whole lot of something, and you kind of alluded to it. It's a little bit of a shame that we've reached our peak performance here at the end of the regular season. I I hate that we don't even play for probably another month because the momentum we've built up over these last five weeks, we want to keep playing football games. We want to see who's next. We can match their face in when the time yeah. comes. Yeah, but for sure. As we talked about sort of all year with this offense, it was still a work in progress. You heard it as early as the preseason and fall camp that the defense was ahead of the offense and the offense was going to be a work in progress. Little did we know it was going to be a work in progress for, you know, nine of these 12 weeks. But I tell you, we have finally hit our stride here with these last three games using Brennan at quarterback again. And I had also previously mentioned that I didn't think that this team had their had a complete performance yet this year, meaning the defense was firing on all cylinders and the offense was too. Well, yeah. we picked a good time to finally do so against UNC, but that was the most complete game we had all year, and what a game it was. So certainly a whole lot of something because we got our swagger back, I think. Yeah, and the Virginia Tech game would be the only one that would be a competition in terms of – um, what what would be our next closest complete game. But in that game, our defense like fell off a cliff in the second half. It just like completely evaporated, went to nothing. And in this one, the defense continued to show up well until when the game was already decided. So, you know, this is what a time, what a game. Next one here, NC State women's basketball has now catapulted up to the number five spot in the AP poll. This comes after beating both number two UConn at home and number three, Colorado, down in the Virgin Islands. Whole lot of nothing, whole lot of something. Whole lot of something because, boy, we really are the Rodney Dangerfield of all college uh, athletics. I mean, you know, it's it's tough for me to say, hey, there is a, a team as a whole that has performed better, that has looked better, that has done more good things as a team this season 
than us. And that's just the reality, right? Like, and, and this is no disrespect to anybody else. This is no disrespect to South Carolina, UCLA, Stanford. This is no disrespect to anybody else. But the reality is, who else at this point in the season has not one, but two wins against top three teams? And both of them weren't home wins. One of them was, but, you know, according to UConn, according to the NCAA, it was more like a neutral site game, if you <laughs> ask them. So two neutral site wins, of course, it was a home game. You get the point, though. Two wins against top five opponents at this point in the season. Who? Who else has that? Who else has that? Who else has done that? Who else has shown up in that way? And I'm sorry, not just top five, top three teams. You beat number two to start this thing off. You beat number three in the tournament. And not only did you beat them, both games double digits, one of which was not even competitive beyond the first quarter. Whole lot of something. Keep disrespecting us. Keep telling this team what they can't do. I'm going to tell you what, this team defends like they have a, a, a running IV drip of the song Finado playing in their veins. That's how they defend. That's how they play defense. It is rugged. It is nasty. Everybody gets in the stance, and yet they're disciplined enough to where you don't see a lot of dumb fouls. You don't see a lot of lazy fouls. They create absolute havoc on the defensive end. And then offensively, they have figured out their roles. They have figured out what they're going to do. Whole lot of something. Push us back. Push us back to 10. If we went out next week, push us back to 20. Push us back to 20. Keep disrespecting this team. Keep sleeping on them. I don't want nobody to wake up until it's all over and we're cutting down some nets. Now, I'm going to go with a whole lot of nothing for that reason. Just use this to continue pushing you once you get closer and closer to ACC play. You don't win a championship in November. Well, I guess maybe you do in the Virgin Islands, but you don't win a season championship in the month of November. So this ranking is great. This ranking is deserved. Is the ranking a little bit too low? Maybe, but you know, you think about going from unranked to what was it, 14 to 10 and to now five in consecutive weeks. That is that's crazy. That's crazy to make a massive jump as far as that is absurd, but it's absolutely warranted with the way that they're playing basketball right now. So, do I think that the ranking is maybe a touch low? Probably, because again, you embarrassed the number two and three teams in the country. Yeah. Not to mention you've steamrolled everyone else you've played in addition to that. I think they're probably a top three, top four team in the country. The ranking doesn't currently reflect that. Doesn't matter. Just keep going. Don't look at it now. Just keep chopping teams down. Keep this train yeah. rolling. Last one here. Dennis Parker Jr. of the men's basketball team was named ACC Rookie of the Week after his performances out in Vegas. Whole lot of nothing. Whole lot of something. Whole lot of something. The boy is smooth. He's got that old man game. He's got that type of game where it's just like you, you're always sitting there wondering like, oh, my God, how did he get that off? Or where did that move come from? His bag is I'm telling you what it's it, he's got a cartoon bag. You know what that is? You know how in cartoons they pull out this tiny little bag and they bring an anvil out of it. And you're like, where under God's green earth did that come from? <laughs> it's one of those moments. I mean. Listen, the reality is DPJ has played wise beyond his years. He's taking care of the ball. He's taking good shots. And he's not afraid of the moment. Whole lot of something. Whole lot of something. This kid is something special. We have a superstar brewing here in Raleigh. I love this kid. He is so effortlessly smooth. He's fearless. He's aggressive. He's composed beyond his years. He plays good defense. He's versatile offensively. I think yeah. his ceiling is so high. We've said this probably three times already on this program. It's been true all three times. This kid is something special. There is something going on here with Dennis Parker Jr. I cannot wait to see how he continues to develop as the season goes on. And, you know, we have a we got a tough matchup on the road that we're going to talk about to close this thing out. Can't wait to see what he looks like against an SEC type competition yeah for sure this is going to be another one of those tests where you look at um you look at this byu school that we lost to and it wasn't so much of a high pressure defensive environment so much as it was that's a team that executes offensively at a high level and that's what they did they shot the ball phenomenally well 
to win the game, along with the help of some very interesting calls early in the game, but we're not going to go there. I think that this whole lot of no- something, whole lot of nothing segment can be chalked up by one phrase. NC State Athletics is hot as fish grease. You name the team, and all we're doing is showing up, whooping tail, dominating, exceeding expectations, and I'm absolutely loving, loving, loving to see it. Over the last month, what, the, the football team is 5-0. and The women's basketball team is also 5-0. and The men's basketball team is 4-1. and I think that that combines for a 14-1 and start here or 14-1 and finish and start here. In the words of uh, one DJ Khaled, tell them to bring the yacht out because, boy, we sure are having the time in Wolfpack land here. Raleigh Wood is buzzing with great teams right now. Wrestling's doing their thing. We had back-to-back-to-back national championships in the women's cross country. Mm -hmm. Things are good in Wolfpack land. This is a time. Revenue sport, non-revenue sport does not matter. All that matters is they're wearing the red and white. And all that matters is if they're wearing the red and white, they're winning some ball games right now. They're winning some competitions right now. Love to see. The brand is strong and the brand is going up. We're happy to be Wolfpack fans at this point in time. Up next, we have Kenton's Locked On Look at the Week with a little bit of a blast from the past after a quick word from our sponsors. Our first sponsor of the day is FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. That's right, $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use. And there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So if you'd like to place some wagers on who the next head coach might be at various schools around the country, get over to FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and continue winning this NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Our second sponsor of the day is LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and simply might not have the time or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even quicker and easier. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, we're back here and we have yet again another locked on look of the week. This is another impressive one laid out by Kenton. Pay attention to this one, folks. The importance of this locked on look of the week is a couple of things. Number one, it's very comical. You can go ahead and throw on your uh, little whimsical <laughs> music because there is some shenanigans afoot. But more importantly, this is not a one-time blast from the past. This is a multiple. This is a Robert and I, you sly dog, you. You've learned the lessons of play calling. And the one thing that I hear a lot about offensive play calls It's called dressing the pig. So what does that mean? It means to run the same or a very similar concept to what you run often, but you're doing it out of slightly different formations, slightly different wrinkles, slightly different motions. So the defenses aren't prepared for what you're doing or they're thinking to themselves, oh, this is something different when it's really just what you've done all along. So this is going to be a half roll with Casey coming in yo-yo motion because he starts off in the slot to the left, to the bottom of the screen here. He goes in motion right past the center. Yo-Yo's back, runs a flat route with both of these receivers out here running in-breaking routes, serving as gentle kind of um, picks, if you will, to get KC open. Now, Brennan Armstrong is going to do a half roll, hit him rolling to the left, bada bing, bada boom. It's a race to the pylon at that point. It's a race that KC wins much more often than not. But 
Look at the top of your screen. Oh, you circled my man. <laughs> Look at the top of the screen for me. <laughs> Big number eight from North Carolina. He just had a birthday come up. Happy birthday, brother. We've got you on candid camera here as a birthday <laughs> gift to you, young man. He fell down in an attempt to get the play stopped. And I, by the way, if you're watching this and you see number eight circled, or if you're listening and you hear me talking about number eight circled, look at what's going on with KC at the same time. Oh, it goes Zilla. He has slipped from the shockwave of big number eight hitting the ground. He has slipped a little bit here, but he's going to regain his footing. We're all right. We're good to go. I mean, look at the man go. And we had to get him in a baby blue box. <laughs> we had to get him in a baby blue box because he didn't even do a good job of faking it. Didn't do a good job. Brother, if you're going to act, act all the way. Get yourself a Tony. Get yourself an Oscar. Get yourself an Emmy. He got a Razzie Award, and that's why the play kept going. Man. Didn't do a good job of selling his injury, and therefore the play went on. And so – I want to talk about this for a second because the original slide showed Kevin Concepcion coming in motion, a lot of in-breaking routes, and him, him coming underneath them to get into the end zone. Well, that happened against Virginia Tech. Now, Grayson, if I do recall, Virginia Tech was last game, correct? Correct. Well, that ain't far enough in the past, I don't think. But it is very similar concept, same deal. You're to the right, roll Brennan to the left, get it to KC, get into the end zone. But that ain't far enough in the past. How about this? How about different quarterback? How about same setup? How about right-handed quarterback on the left hash? What do we still got going on? KC in motion, multiple in-breaking routes, and KC hitting that flat into the end zone against Clemson as well. Now, we've dressed the pig up because like I talked about originally, the idea of dressing the pig is to get defenders to not realize it's the same thing that we've seen time and time and time again because this is very simply Kevin Concepcion coming in motion, hitting that little flat route, hitting the end-breaking routes to set a little bit of a diversion, get the defense's eyes in the wrong place when you recognize this man, having a quarterback roll into it, and hit him for six. And you know what KC said? You know what KC said? He said, I'm like Lou Will. I like to score in twos. If you don't know who Lou Williams is, look him up. You'll find out why that joke is funny. I can't tell you why on this show because I don't want to get a call from David Locke. But he's putting up the peace sign. He's letting him know every time I get in the end zone, got to hit me at least like two touchdowns. Like two of them things, and look at him. He's celebrating touchdown number two of the <laughs> game. Boy, I tell you what, KC, what a player. Coach and I, what a play caller. And I'll tell you what, Mr. and I, let me let you in on the secret. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you put lipstick on the pig and they think it's a duck, keep putting lipstick on that thing. If you put a little bit of a, a little jacket on it and they think it's spider pig instead of a regular pig, Keep putting that jacket on it, brother, because it is working. This play, this concept alone, in breakers with KC going to the flat, has resulted in at least three touchdowns that I have shown you on today. What a time. What a play call. What a play caller. And what whimsical activity. What unserious activity by the boys in baby blue just sitting down and saying, oh, my leg, my neck, my back, my neck and my back on that play instead of playing some defense like they should have been doing there. <laughs> I hope folks are catching these Easter eggs because they are gold. <laughs> They're gold Easter eggs in this, this show today. But Absolutely. something else I find hilarious about repeatedly finding KC is oftentimes when he scores, he doesn't score just once. He scores yeah. in twos, like Kenton mentioned. I believe it's five different games this year. He had two touchdowns in. How do, mm -hmm. how do teams not stop that? I know I asked that question, I think it was Saturday night, but how was nobody able to effectively stop him seemingly all year? How does that even happen? Well, I, I think the reality is, even if you know what's coming, at some point in time, it's man versus man, and you've got to do what you've got to do. And I talked about this earlier on TikTok um, in the year about how Colorado, for all that people want to talk about him right now, 
that is a well-coached team in many regards. And I knew so because the play against TCU where Travis Hunter caught the interception on the goal line, they ran a very similar concept to what KC has done and scored multiple times. But what happened was every single guy, as soon as they saw the offense run in breaking routes, their eyes immediately snapped to the next man outside immediately. That's the only way you can stop that kind of concept. And even then, you have to have a player make a phenomenal play. If you look at that interception, Travis Hunter made a phenomenal play there. In this, even if you pick up this scheme perfectly, your defenders are still going to have to make, somebody's going to have to make a play on that ball to break it up. And if there is a player in that type of range or in that type of mode where, oh no, we read it wrong or they read it perfectly, um, they're in zone coverage, whatever the case may be, somebody still has to make a play. And in terms of stopping KC, somebody has to make a play on him because he hasn't just scored from that play. We scored, showed you three touchdowns from that play, but there have been many more. He's got seven more touchdowns on the year, all of which are receiving, by the way. Despite the fact that he was our leading rusher for multiple games, never scored a rushing touchdown, not one. So, uh, and yes, technically the little push pass is a pass. So um, with that being said, you know, this is this is the reality that, when it's man on man, you and KC one on one, you got to stop him. KC has proven um, he's like Mark Grayson. The guy's invincible. Can't touch him. He is like that, as the kids like to say these yeah. days. But also, who else has been like that? Robert and I. Again, yeah. hats off to Coach and I for all of the insane draw ups he had at, at the latter half of this season. We told y'all to keep a closer eye on some of the things that he was pulling off. And then they really got a big old spotlight on him once this offense got going these last couple of weeks. Absolutely. He is a difference maker here in Ross. Not just a difference maker this season. Think about the possibilities. And you, you talk about the portal opening up here in a couple of weeks. Players are going to want to be in that system. A lot of players are going to be looking at what KC did this season in Raleigh and saying, I would like some of that, please. Yeah, give me some of that. Give me some Robert and I because he can make me into a superstar as well. Mm -hmm. NC State's offense is going to be a very attractive place to play here in a very short amount of time. I a thousand percent agree. And the, the reality is, when you're looking at this team and saying, like, what do they have that attracts recruits? Your answer is very simply this This is a team that if you are a playmaker, they will find you. Yes. If you are a playmaker, they will get the ball to you. If you are a guy that can get it done, that can find your way open, that can do all those things, they will make sure that you get the ball. So, you know, if you want to get developed, if you want to be something special, if you want to do all those great things in terms of having the opportunity to make big catches, having the opportunity to make big plays, at every position you've seen us utilize guys in ways where it's like, Man, how did he end up that wide open, right? We talk about KC on this same route concept three times. How did he end up that open? Trent Penix, how many times has he ended up wide open on some concepts where you're just like, man, those wheel routes up the sideline, that little throwback in this game, which he dropped. But at the end of the day, it's still a great moment for him in terms of, of a play being drawn up for him. It's, a, it's just a really great time there. When Robert and I committed to come to NC State and be the offensive coordinator, we said back then – what he does best is get the ball into the hands of his playmakers. Yeah. Tried and true. Yeah. Tried and true. The man gets it done. Looking forward to a whole lot more from Coach and I in the near future. Up next, we have a little bit of a preview for this big-time ACC-SEC Challenge game. The men's basketball team will be on the road down in Oxford, Mississippi tonight, 9 p.m. We're going to give you a look inside what to expect. The third sponsor of the day is Prize Picks. Prize picks are simply the most fun you can have this fantasy sports season. With basketball season now here, you can choose combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League. This is a league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players across different sports or leagues. So, for example, you can choose LeBron James and Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo for three pointers made and receptions. And if you want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players, like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz, you can now find them in Community Plays under the Promos tab. These are entries from some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each and every week. And of course, Prize Picks also offers their reboot policy so that your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. 
For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So head on over to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Finishing out our Tuesday show here, men's basketball has a massive opportunity on the road tonight. Going down to Old Miss in the ACC SEC Challenge, this is a huge opportunity on the road to pick up a resume building win. Now, of course, Old Miss, they have five wins. They're five and zero. Oh. I wouldn't exactly call any of them something to write home about. They've beaten Alabama State by 10, Eastern Washington by 11, Detroit Mercy by 19, Sam Houston State by three, and Temple by just one. Their offense doesn't seem to be anything spectacular. So, I'm really going to be looking forward to this NC State defense keeping up that intensity that we saw in the first half of that BYU game. Sort of tapered off in the second half and it ultimately cost us. But earlier in that game, we had BYU shook, and they are a very productive offensive team. If you if you get off the bus down in Oxford and you come out and put the straps on them, I expect NC State to win this game on the road. Yeah, they um, Ole Miss is one and a half point favorites, and they say that uh, home court advantage is worth three to five points. You know, so we'll we'll see how this thing plays out. But I think our men will be just fine so long as they you know don't pick up silly fouls, um, defend well, get out and, and cover shooters, and rebound in offense or in defensive possessions. Rather, that's very important for this thing. Old Miss really has about two to three solid scoring options couple of senior guards in Alan Flanagan and Matthew Morrell. If you can stick Casey and Jaden Taylor on the two of them, I feel very confident about the rest of our depth to induce turnovers, to generate a lot of steals, get down the floor and transition. And something I also need to see from this NC State team, smart shot selection. Not shooting so early in the shot clock because I saw a lot of that, probably too much of that in that BYU game. Yeah. And we had control of that game until we sort of got out of our own sink there. If we go down there, again, run the offense through DJ Burns because a lot of the sets that have the most success are being run off of DJ Burns from what I've seen so far. So like you said as well, Kenton, crash the boards, no lazy fouls, not so concerned with the lack of hustle in this year's team. I've, I've seen a lot to like in that department, but yeah. I truly do believe NC State is the better basketball team, and this is a big-time opportunity. P5 team, an SEC team no less, on the road, I want to eat some ice cream Tuesday night. Let's get it done. Absolutely. Absolutely. That'll do it for us here on Tuesday. As always, be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box. Tell us what you think is going to go down in Oxford this evening. And be sure to mash that subscribe button. Picked up a ton of subscribers here in the last couple of days. Thank you so much for that. We're getting close to 1,000 and beyond. That's been our goal for some time, and we're nearly there. Couldn't do it without all of you guys. Thank you so very much for that. Until tomorrow, go Pack. Go Pack.